how to install a real care reborn hybrid body into your reborn baby doll so i sell these on my shopify store the link will be in the description and i'm sure i will be able to put some sort of link on here so you can find where they are so i make these real care box installed into the body and you just need to add the head the arms and the legs from your baby into this body I do also sell the boxes on their own, so you can see how to install one of these into the body and then put it into your reborn. But if you are not feeling too confident about this step here with the sewing and stuff, then you're going to be following along with this video. The first thing that is important is you need to find which body is the correct size for your baby. So this is baby Luc Lucia, Lucia, I'm not 100% sure. But I have found the COA and I went online and I confirmed that he is a 19 and a half inch kit. So his body will be the 19 to 20 inch body. I know that he has full arms and full legs. So this is the correct body for him. So I'm only going to do a few body sizes, probably the 19 and then the 21, unless there's real need for the other sizes. I need to undress him. And now we're going to clip his cable ties. I use these little ones. If you don't have them, use scissors. Just be so careful to not cut the body. And also try not to dent the paint. And hold the head because the head's going to come falling off. There we go, like that. Also note that I'm using one of the little puppy pads. You could also use a towel, just something clean that you can put the baby on so that when you are resting the limbs places that they don't get dirty. Or wipe the table down, wipe the desk down, just make it a clean surface that you're working on. And then we're going to take off the arms the same way. the stuffing and the weighting from this body because we're going to use it in this body. If you ever see something like this in your baby, don't worry, it's a wonder wafer and if you smell it, it smells just like baby powder. It smells gorgeous, so you want to make sure you put that back into your baby. This next part is super important. Make sure that you put the baby's batteries in. This is so that the baby will weigh the correct amount when you're weighting the body. Because 4C batteries are quite heavy. You may not have a controller, so what I'm going to suggest is putting a piece of paper over the end of the battery so that it does not allow the terminal to connect properly. So. It can go in there anyway, it just, we want the weight of it in there basically. And it's just easier to have them in. I'm just gonna pop this back on. This is the perfect opportunity to reweigh your baby if you want to. So what I do when I make them is I try and keep them as close to the artist's original work as possible. So I put in the same amount that I take out. So. This is 84, and this part here now weighs 460. So I'm going to minus the 460, 46, out of the, I think, 84. So I'm going to take 84 from 46. So I need to have 38. I have a big bag that says fine glass beads on it, and these are the beads that I take out. I sometimes feel like a baby's not heavy enough and I do add some to it, but this baby was really nice and heavy. So what I'm going to do is empty some of this into here. Oh. And now I'm trying to get to, is it 30, 38?
Now we're going to start stuffing the body. So my suggestion is to put the weighting in and stuff the bottom and especially the back behind this part of the real care box before you put the legs on just so you can kind of get in there. So I'm using the stuffing that came from the baby. I'm going to put the very first piece in behind here because that can get really hard to stuff when you've put the legs on. And then I'm going to put this weighting. I'm actually going to make it so... If I can make it so that it's um, more squishy. So I just pulled the knot up. And then that can go over. It's a little bit looser kind of thing. And then it's more moldable. So that I'm going to put down here. And then I'm just going to keep stuffing around it. Don't forget to pop the Wonder Wafers back in. So I'm going to put them, I'm going to try and put them on top of the box. And then I'll put stuffing on top of those. You can stuff this however you like. When I stuff them, I it's I would call this overstuffing for a regular reborn baby. But when you add a big hard box in the back, you need to take that into consideration. So you just go around and feel where you think needs extra stuffing and really just pat it out. Like I just felt like a an empty lump there, so I went ahead and added some more. But you can see the body kind of like goes in and out on the sides there, so kind of makes sense. I made sure to put some in the bum so that there's a little bit of a butt. And look, this is a little bit hard here. It's like I said, it's because of the weighting and the hard box. So the hard box is pushing the weighting further forward. You can't have everything, unfortunately. <laughs> if you have a bigger baby, then of course there's more room and it is going to be less stiff up. So my favorite size and my favorite baby to do is the Alexa sculpt. So I think she's 21 inches or 22, but she's like a chunky zero to three month girl and, or boy. And um, yeah, she works really well because of her size of her body. Now we have sorted all that out. We're going to put the limbs on. I'm just gonna do it up and make sure that it can still rotate easily. Give it a pull, make sure it's not going to come off. I think that that's good. Now that we have the legs on, I'm just going to refill the body again and make sure I'm happy with it. I am happy with it. It feels not too bad. It feels so different with the body on versus when it's just a body that's like stuffing coming out everywhere. Now that the body is all together with the arms and legs, I do like a final check, pick it up on the sides and make sure that the sides are all padded. Even when I pick up the baby like this, I can't even feel that stocking in there with the weight anymore. I can feel that there's something hard, but it kind of feels like a baby. So I'm really quite happy with this one. I'm going to trim the cable ties with this.
This is probably going to be the hardest part. So we're going to take, if there's a plug in the baby's head, take that out and take all of the weighting and the fluffing out of the baby's head. You don't have to take all of it out, but at least majority of it. We need to remove the magnet. So if you can feel the magnet, that's so great. If not, I have like a little mini screwdriver. So we're just going to lift the magnet off, either the felt, if they have, if the artist has put felt on it, scrape that off. Very, very, very hard to show you this part, but I have a piece of felt in here and I'm just scraping it off. There it is, there's the felt. That's sticking to it. You can get a pair of pliers. I actually have these little things. So I never used to have these, but I recently bought them. And they're like little pliers that they use in like surgery. I just bought them off eBay. And they're just like, they look like scissors, but they're little clamps. The reason that we take the, the magnet out is that with the feeding sensor, this part here, it works with the magnet. So it will just have the feeding sensor going off at all times. So you have to remove the magnet from the baby's head. And so they can't accept a dummy through a magnet. But I do use silicon putty. Some silicon putty, I cut it in half. I mold it onto a dummy and then you can stick it to the baby's lips or this baby has like an opening in the mouth so you could use a half cut dummy or you could also just put the silicon putty in the baby's mouth. I'm going to be so sad to see this baby go but I think this baby is going to make a beautiful hybrid and I'm very excited. You're going to need to find something to stash the baby's head on. I've just got a little basket and I've put a nice soft blanket in there. I'm gonna make sure I keep the baby on a surface that's clean. Now put this feeding sensor into the baby's head and glue it there. So this time I'm going to use the hot glue gun to put the feeding sensor in place. I just want to quickly show you the difference between a hot glue gun and a low heat glue gun. These are both from Kmart. This one says glue gun refills 12 pieces. And this one says glue gun refills 12 pieces. Have a look at here. It says low temperature on this one and it does not say low temperature on this one. These low temperature ones are so good to not burn yourself with. And I think, I don't know if this is from Kmart or Spotlight or this is my glue gun and I didn't realize, but it is a low heat glue gun and I absolutely love it. However, I feel like the glue doesn't stick as well and it can peel off easier than the hot glue gun, which kind of makes sense. So today I'm going to burn my little fingers with the hot, hot glue gun and put that sensor in place. The first thing we're going to do is put our fingers in the head and feel for where the mouth sensor is going to go. And we want to like push on the, the vinyl. So push outwards. You can see that I'm pushing out. I can feel that I'm aiming for right there. So I'm going to go just above. I'm going to look inside and see roughly where that is. There's also the glue marks from where the dummy was. It is so hard to show you. Line it up where you think the lips are as best as you can. We're going to hot glue and whack it in. Then we're going to use the stuffing to keep it in place. And don't forget, we also need to make sure that the weighting goes back in the head. Also, you can still see some fluffing in here. I like to leave a little bit of fluffing in there just so I can get the sensor to like hold up against something. It's really hard doing it on camera versus just doing it. We want this little end to stick to the baby's mouth. So that's all you get. Sometimes you can make like a little, like you can make like a little glue area for it to stick onto, you know what I mean? Like let this get bigger and then have it dry. 
which I think is really the way to go, make it a bigger area. So you can see how I've just gone like around and around and around and just made it bigger. And I'm going to hold it down so that the gravity hopefully takes it down a bit. I'm going to let that dry. And what I like to do is to aim the glue gun into the baby's head, make a little puddle for it to stick to. Honestly, if we can have this like tacky and then they can both tack to each other, that would be even better. I usually glue these with tacky glue. But the last one I did, I did with hot glue and I just felt like it was so much better and it got the job done quicker. And I feel a lot better about it being the hot, hot glue because I feel like that just, it's more secure than normal glue. Okay, I can't show you this bit. I'm lining it up. So we're going to think about gravity here and what way that the glue is going to fall. And we're going to do our absolute best. Going to put our finger in the mouth where we're aiming for so we can push on the vinyl. And we can kind of see that. I can't show you that, but I can see it moving. And we're going to aim for right there. It's so much quicker to do this with hot glue. So I'm going to hold it in place where normally I have this little bucket here and I have the baby's head dry overnight. So there's a few ways to do it if you don't have the hot glue gun or if you don't want to do the hot glue gun. And if you feel like it's a bit in the wrong spot, I have a chopstick that I quite often use to move things around. I'm just going to push it over a little bit. It's fiddly work this. It's not hard, it's just fiddly and the hot glue makes it so much easier. Honestly, I'm thinking once the hot glue is in there, I might even go over it with the tacky glue. I choose the tacky glue because it has stretch to it. So um, if the sensor was to be moved a bit, it's not going to like snap off. Like you can imagine that something like Gorilla Glue is like almost like a resin when it dries. It's very hard and like snappable. Whereas hot glue has a bit of stretch to it when it dries. Not heaps, but a little bit. And tacky glue has a lot of stretch to it when it dries. So, so, so hard to show you, but that's where we're at. It's stuck down there and you can see that it's pointing like towards the baby's lips. So like when you put the bottle on the lips, the sensor's going to line up. I'm going to put a little bit extra glue. So I'm going to just try and leave it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. I'm going to make sure I can see what I'm doing as well. Yes, that's going on there. Good. Good, 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 good. Use gravity a little bit, get the hot glue go over it so it sticks in there. I've let that glue dry a fair bit and I've touched it and it's honestly pretty stable. So now I'm feeling confident to be able to put the weighting and the stuffing back in. Just be very mindful that you need to not bump the wires. So when you put the weighting of the stuff, the, the when you put the weighting back in, be mindful if the baby is a sleeping baby because it's going to be up the top at the back or if it's an awake baby, it's more at the bottom at the back because they're a little bit more awake. They still have weighting in their head, but if it's a sleeping baby, they're going to have a heavier, droppier head because they don't have as much neck control. However, a newborn probably needs to be at the back even if they're awake or not because they can't hold their heads. So just be aware of those other things. I'm not an artist. I don't do this all the time. So these are just the little bits that I've picked up on. So if you know other information and want to pop it down the bottom, please do because I'm not perfect and we can always learn from everybody else. Well, when you're putting this in, we're going to want to have the wires at the front and we're going to go behind the wires. So we're going to just gently use gravity and I'm just going to poke the beads in there. Just take your time. It's no rush. Okay, it's at the back. You want to add some stuffing. If you have any leftover stuffing, that's always good. But I always like to have this sensor nice and tight. So what I've done is I've packed behind it and now I'm going to get more stuffing and I want to pack in front of it. So I want to make sure that the sensor is facing straight out. I don't want it this way. I don't want it that way. I want it to be facing in line with the lips, facing towards the lips. 
just because I've done something a certain way, it doesn't mean that you need to do it this way. If you come up with a great idea, feel free to give it a go. This is just a way that I use and it works for me. And I do change my ways all the time. I'm not going to lie about that. Something I also say is like treat the real care hybrids as a real baby. Like you wouldn't be going and twisting a real baby's head around and around. So you can twist it side to side, but don't ever rotate it fully because if you rotate it fully, then this wire is going to, you can imagine, get twisted up and up and up and up. And eventually it's going to um, pull either from the box or from the feeding sensor and move it. So it's just one of those things you've got to be, you know, aware that it's not a toy. It is definitely a really, really cool thing, but we just need to treat it very delicately. When you stuff the head, make sure that you stuff it in a reasonable amount, but don't overstuff it because then you can change the direction of the sensor in the mouth. So it's up to you if you want to put the head on or leave it off and test it, like wait for the care event. I'm going to test it because I can. So I've programmed the baby to go into a feed and I'm going to pop the battery in. It's ready for a feed. He, she, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. So this one here, the knuck teats are a little bit funny. So when I put the sensors in them, I put them in straight ways. So when you hold the bottle, you have to hold it up as in like, up as in like, so the milk can go down. Do you know what I mean? So that's how this baby, this baby will have to come with a knuck bottle. So I have, I think two versions of this bottle. I've got this white one and another one, so I'll make the packs up according to this bottle. But it works, so we're good to put everything back together. Just quickly, see this ring here? This is, I think, called a neck ring, and basically it means that you can tighten the cable tie as tight as you can, and then the head can still turn. I don't know why artists don't use all of them on the head, the arms, and the legs. They should come with the kits, but they don't. Anyways, I've had my rant about that. <laughs> Make sure you pull all of the fabric over the cable ties. So now's a really good time to go back and do that. The head is floppy. I like that the floppiness in the head. I love a heavy baby because it just, they flop so well. I know that sounds so funny, but I just love a floppy reborn. Alrighty, we are all done. Here's the back. So do the cable tie up and snip it off. And now we have to see if this little baby is going to be a boy or a girl. I kind of like this baby as a boy, but I'm going to dress it as both and list it on my Shopify as both. So you're able to choose the gender of the hybrids that I make now. Here she is as a girl. She's very cute. I love this little outfit. I just quickly grabbed it out. Obviously, she doesn't have a nappy or anything on because we're just going to take some photos for her listing. And then I'll show her as a boy after. I see a boy. I honestly think I just see a boy. Oh, he's so cute in blue. And by the way, this outfit smells like the twinnies and it makes me sad. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's just been like washed. It was the twinnies. It's been washed at their house and then it got bought here and they obviously were getting rid of it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you put one of the real care boxes into your reborn. So now you have a hybrid baby. If you want to buy one, I sell them on my Shopify. I'll put the link somewhere here, as I said at the start of the video. And enjoy. Please subscribe to my channel so you can find more videos like this. I have other videos on all different kinds of simulations for, for reborn babies because I just really love adding that extra layer onto them. They already look so real, but I love that you can make them seem so real and act so real even though they're a doll. It's going to be really really hard watching this baby find a forever home but that is okay because I enjoy doing this so that you guys can have beautiful babies that are lifelike as well. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.